Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to show you this rope structure and especially talking about how do you get this braiding looking pattern for this design. Are you ready? Let's get started. In today's tutorial, I'm going to build a basic ring like this and change it into the rope design. The B setting has been demonstrated in many of my other videos, just here to show you what the option that you can have on this type of a design. So that's starting with the scratch. So we're going to come in into the front view and using the circle command, type it zero as the center and the diameter setting for 16 millimeter. Then we're going to come in into the top view. Let's using the arc command snapping into the quadrant and we can decide how wide we wanted to have this ring to be. I usually like to draw a straight line, something look like this. And um, having the line instead of draw it directly, I like to use the command for blend. So you have the blend curve. You're going to blend from this curve to this curve. So this will be smoother. And if you don't like it that much, you can always move it to find the best angle uh, for this one. I simply just need to mirror to the other side. By the way, I'm looking at my front view. Uh, all of a sudden, I see this curve is like that. So I'm actually going to pick up both of them on the top view and using the command project it to C plane and make sure you delete the input. So then you will get something like this. I like the two side is symmetrical, so let's just go ahead to using the mirror. And we're going to mirror to the other side and let's go ahead to join them. Now, a lot of the time we can just using this to creating the curve, but I personally like it to be simplified. Doesn't have any break or seam on my curve. So I'm going to use the command rebuild. And we want to rebuild into more point uh, for whatever original have. So let's say I want a 16 point over there and click OK. Make sure degree is 3 so then we will get this one. Now we need to have this curve hopping on this curve. So we are going to use the command for curve from two view. And we're going to click this one and this one and then we'll get something like that. We don't need the one on the bottom. So let's go ahead to use this one and we can trim the bottom off. So then we will have the one on the top. And we don't need this one either. So let's just go ahead to hide it. Uh, do not delete those curves because you might need to bring out uh, to work on it again. Okay. Now, as you can see, there's so many control points. If I want to pick up the point to edit, it's like you're going to have a lot of a kink there. So again, we want to rebuild this curve and let's go ahead to rebuild it. In fact, in this case, we want to rebuild into the last curve. So take a look on all top front side view. As long as it's not changing way too much that we can accept it. So now let's go ahead to use uh, 16. It will be great. Let's click OK. If you turn on control point again, it will see it's a lot more manageable. All right, so let's go ahead to creating the surface that we want. I would like to have the surface go with a rectangle, conic corner, and I'm going to click in somewhere right there, holding my shift, coming down something like that. If you are going to set the stone, you may want to make sure that you can set it as stone the distance that you have on the edge, you can set it a stone there. Okay. And I also wanted to have another one coming back by mirror to the other side. So I can control how it come back. Let's give it a try. We want to use the sweep one rail. Under the surface, you have the command for sweep one rail. And you got a rail. You got a cross section one and two. Make sure they are aligned. I like to have a seam in inside. And facing the same direction. In this case, they are facing outward. And let's record a history as well. And click OK. And this is what we get there. OK. So I'm going to have this one using the rotate command. And make sure copy equal yes. Snapping into the zero. And I'm going to rotate it 180 degree. And you will see something like this. All right. 
and this pretty flat there, right? Um, let me turn this curve into the red color. It's easier to show you. Since we recorded history, so we can kind of play with this curve right here. Now you can do any of the design, whether one size higher, one size lower, for whatever fitting into your design purpose. But I'm looking at my design right here. It looks like the one it should be tucking under the other one and coming out to the top and you know tugging under the other side too. So I'm going to follow this design to show you what I did. Um, so back to our design right there. The loop might be too big, but you know we can adjust later. I would like to have this curve and also this curve right here as a profile. And I would like to have this mirror to the other side. Let's type it zero and mirror to there because we want this has own history. So let's go ahead to use the sweep one rail. This is the rail, this is cross section. And again, moving the seam inside of a ring shank. And before we hit enter, uh, make sure you record a history. Let's hit OK. And then for this one, let's go ahead to using the green one. All right, so both has a history right now. Ideally, I want this guy going inside. So I'm going to pick up this curve and turn on the control point right there. Uh, for this one, I'm going to Having those two points going down a little bit, having those two points going down as well. And I also on the top view want to scale them in a little bit. So like this will go a little bit closer, right? For this one, I would like them to go higher because it's need to hopping on top of it. And this one as well. and even more higher like this. Okay, now we have this one done or close to what we like. Maybe this one need to go lower a little bit so it felt like it's underneath this, right? The other side, we're gonna turn on the control point as well for this curve. And then we will need to have the point over here go higher so now this is completely on top of it, maybe a little bit higher like this. And you kind of keep adjusting until you find the shape. I'm going to fast forward here so you can see how I adjust those shapes here. All right, so I'm going to stop tweaking here and you kind of get the idea for what I'm trying to do. I just want to give you an idea what you can do there. For the bottom of the ring shank, we can creating another profile and we're going to do something like this. And moving this one from the midpoint to the quadrant as well. So I'm going to making a copy for those profile and let's go ahead to creating another curve and send it to copy that to that curve there. And I also wanted to copy those actually change the object layer for there so we can kind of build this uh, separately. It's not too complicated. So basically on this one, I would like to just draw a box and starting into the end point there and also the end point there using that one to trim a bunch of them. So let's go ahead to trim those whatever inside. And I should have moving those to the outer edge here. And using that to trim off this rectangle to trim off this inside. All right. And simply we can just connect them with the straight line. So I'm going to connect it from here to here and from here to here. The same from here to here and from here to here. And all we need to do is join them together. 
Now we join them and we have the other one on the bottom so we can go ahead to use the sweep one rail and we go from this to this to this and make sure that you align them nicely inside of the ring shank so I would like to do something like this and hit enter I click OK so then we will have this inside of the ring shank so then we will have this for the bottom of the ring shank let's turn on whatever on the top and then uh, bowling union together make them into the solid that will work now you notice that this is some like a uh, line is not too smooth as you can see in the render view it's probably because we didn't rebuild this cross section and you can do that if you want to to just need to rebuild it so let me show you what i mean i'm going to go back with this curve right here and both of them i would like to rebuild them and get it as close as possible so let's do 16 point on both of them and then uh, the bottom one you wanted to rebuild as well so let's go ahead to do the sweep one rail one more time this is the rail this is the cross section one two and three and let's go ahead to align inside with this and hit enter and then the the ring will look smoother there however the top here might not be 100 percent match um, but it's okay it's really minor and once you kept it uh, become the solid on this piece then um, turn back here make sure this is a solid and you can bowling union this tiny different can actually be polished out all right what I'd like to show you is how we're going to get this into the rope looking things. So we have this curve right here. And I'm going to have this curve to know what is the length. And the length is on the top here showing is 37.91. So I'm going to making a copy of that. And let's draw a straight line with exactly the same length and that will represent that red line there so we just need to do a rope from here let's go ahead to making three circle and this is a circle one and having that circle i'm going to using the polar array command and snapping into here and I want to pull array three of them. So then I'll get something like that. Let's go ahead to trim everything in the middle. And don't forget to use the join command to join them. Now with this, it's a little bit too sharp looking. So I'm going to fit the corners there. And I want to fit it the corner for maybe 0.2. So it will be a little bit rounder. All right. So now this is the shape that we want. Let me find out where is the center. So I'm going to use the area centroid command and you will get the dot there and that dot will be the center. Let's moving this center to the end point of the curve that we draw. And this might be a little bit too fat over there. So let's go ahead to use a 3D scale tool and we want to scale it down a little bit more and we'll get something like this okay um next thing so we, is we need to make them into the solid by using the extruded command we want to extrude it straight for this one all the way to the end here so to twist it simply we want to use the twist command so let's go ahead to use the twist and we want to snapping into this end point and we're gonna do from this axis going to the other end point and we're gonna come in back here and I want to infinity equal yes so starting from here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that should be enough and as he enter then we'll get something like this all right let's delete this one and see if that works and since this one is actually on the very bottom of the design so i'm going to have this one this curve 
and this piece and we are going to align on the bottom to start with so then we'll get something like this so that's using the command flow and we want to pick up this one hit enter this is the base curve here before we hit the target we want to record a history and let's hit the target curve and you're going to see one side actually follow pretty well and but the other side is not so i find out it's easier if you actually do just half of them um, this is what i mean here so i'm going to uh, delete this one and we are going to pick up this and just coming over here let's draw a curve from the midpoint of that line and let's draw a straight line and this will be our cutting tool and that's using that to trim off the extra over there so then we want to also cap this one just in case you know it's harder to turn it into the solid one so you deform it and let's give it a try we want to use the command for flow one more time and we want to flow this guy and hit enter click on the base click on the target if you get it upside down this is probably because you're clicking in the wrong side so we can do one more time so I'm going to click on the object and click on the base and click on the target all right so this look much better there um, and then you can simply just uh, mirror to the other side to finish the look so we want to use the mirror command type it there and then we'll have something like this as we reach the end of the year i want to thank you for being part of this learning journey that the lessons and the experience of this year become the power for your future and we will continue to the next year. I wish you the best and see you next year.